to maximize your classroom experience. That was pretty loud. I remember the very first time when I went to a swing dancing event. It was in a place in Houston, Texas. I won't give any names. I'll actually give a name. It was called Lindy Fest. Really, really good event. You should check it out. And I remember the format was you had to dance in class with a bunch of other people and you had to rotate with different partners. I remember being extremely frustrated in class because all of the people within the circle, I wouldn't say all, but a handful of them were wanting to teach me as I was learning from the people in the middle of the circle. I paid a lot of money to go to this event and I wanted to hear someone's dance opinion from the professional who was in the middle of the circle. I remember the struggle of trying to get all the value out of the class, but I had all of these different distractions and I really wanted to extract the most knowledge that I could and get good at this dance as fast as possible. I want to give you three, ma that's six, three major principles that allowed me to get the most out of my classroom experiences at big events. The very first thing that I did when I went to classes was assume the private approach. What this is, is just a way to put on blinders, pretending that it's only just you and the instructor in the classroom. So you have to come in laser focused, turn your cell phone off, have no distractions. When you take a private lesson, you spend a lot of money to have the intention of the instructor, just you one-on-one. -on -one. So if you come into that group setting, laser focus, I promise you, you're gonna get a lot out of that class if you assume everything that they're talking about in the class is about you. The second principle that I utilized was the teacher approach. What this simply means is you go into a classroom pretending as if you are going to be teaching the same type of material within three to six months. What this does is it allows you to analyze everything that the teacher is saying so that you can figure out a way where you can communicate that same information in the way that you would communicate it in your home community. Most people are not going to go out and get the same education about swing dancing that you are. And when you do this for yourself, you're actually investing in your community when you share that same knowledge with other people. The last principle that I applied is the hardest one. You must take massive action. This means as soon as that class is over, you need to videotape the instructor if they're nice and they let you do that, but you also simultaneously need to record yourself. You need to see what you look like at this moment in time in your dancing. The big catch is you're going to be your hardest critic. If you don't videotape yourself to actually see your incremental progress, you're going to be too discouraged to go through the process of maturity. When you nail that swing out, you should put your happy face on. And if it doesn't work sometimes, you should put your disgusted face on when you watch that footage and then get back to the hard work of taking massive action. For every hour of class that I took, I had to process that information with two hours of social dancing. The information had to go from my mind into my body naturally, and there are no shortcuts. If you haven't already, I encourage you to take my Fundamentals and Beyond course. What we've done in this course is strip away all of the complexities and provided a simple foundation so that you can fix yourself as you're going through the learning curve. If that was helpful for you, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel where you're gonna learn more about swing dancing, swing music, and swing history. If I don't see you in class online, I hope to dance with you on the social dance floor. Take care.